On this edition of Read with Ronald, I will be reading Dauntless, the first book in Jack Campbell's The Lost Fleet series. If you would like to know how I got into reading this series and why I'm reading it, be sure to check out my introduction to The Lost Fleet video. Today is May 2nd. I am going to start reading the first book in the Lost Fleet series, which I think is Dauntless. It doesn't look very long, and I'm excited to read it because it looks interesting, but I am a little nervous because the author is a retired military. The last retired service member we read did not go well. I hope this book will be good. We'll see how this goes. Today is May 10th. Today is the actual day I started reading. What's going on is that the main character, his name is Captain Blackjack Geary, a captain for the Alliance Navy. He has just been awoken from a survival hibernation that he was in for about a century. And he's on the Dauntless ship. And like they're under attack because they're fighting a war against this enemy called the Syndicate. And so the Syndicate has agreed to negotiations with the ship's Admiral, which is Admiral Block. Before he leaves for the negotiations, he puts Geary in charge and he's like, if anything happens to me, make sure you get the ship back to the Alliance because the ship has the hypernet key on board. Hypernets are faster than light traveling systems and the Alliance has their own hypernet system and the Syndicates have their own hypernet system and they can't use them interchangeably. So the reason why it's important for the Alliance to get this key back to the Alliance is because by having it, it will allow them to travel on the Syndicate Hypernet system. And Gary just feels like it's been a century since he was the last alive. So everybody he knew is gone. Everybody he was friends with is gone. He don't know what to do and he feels out of place. And he just feels like they're just leaving him in charge just to kind of like give like a symbolic honor. The Alliance Navy has lost like a lot of the customs and traditions he's used to them doing like saluting and stuff like that. It's lost a lot of the like order and organization that it has. It's very sure that like Block is gonna come back from the negotiations. I'm like, no, he's not. I feel like the negotiations with the syndicate are set up to take out the leaders of the Alliance fleet and they're gonna try to cut off the leadership and then they're gonna spring in a, another attack. And they don't know that Blackjack is on the ship and will basically take charge and is basically have to come into his own as a captain and take charge and basically lead them to victory in this book. So Gary basically is like, he don't know what to do, but he starts slowly falling back into the role of ship captain. He gets in contact with the communications officer, tells them, oh, let me know when the Alliance captains get to the syndicate ship for the negotiations. The communications officer is like really freaked out because basically the syndicate has sent this video to all of the ships, which basically shows them executing Admiral Block and all the men that went with him and the syndicate CEO is like, yeah, y'all got an hour to surrender and if y'all don't surrender, we're gonna come and destroy y'all. It'll be reasonable because y'all are just soldiers and y'all can't be held accountable for like following y'all leader's orders. Gary decides to get in contact with Captain Dejani. Captain Dejani is the captain of Dauntless. Dauntless is the flagship. She's also the one with the knowledge of the hypernet. The captains of the surrounding ships are like trying to figure out what to do because they know that Geary has been left in charge, but they were concerned that he wouldn't take charge, but he's decided to take charge and he calls a meeting, tell them what they're gonna do next. And he like reassesses like his fleet. And so while he's reassessing the fleet, he notices that something is off, but he can't quite place what it is. And so he heads down there to the meeting and he talks to Dejani in person. He is the last hope for the fleet because the hypernet was given to them by a syndicate trader. And so the syndicate trader gave them the hypernet to get to the syndicate. They basically are like confronting the main bulk of the syndicate's fleet and they have been uh, beaten down terribly by the syndicate. He asks Dejani how, how the captains are feeling and she tells him that the captains, they're tired, but they're not beaten, you know, trying to save face. He's considered a legend because he fought in one of the first battles of the war. He held off the syndicate long enough for the convoy that he was with to escape. So they've been fighting this war for over a century. He's like, I wasn't trying to be a hero. I was just doing my job. And yeah, he managed to get everybody out. He evacuated everyone. Then he himself escaped in like a damaged escape pod and 
was in survival hibernation for like over a century and that's how they found him. And so he doesn't feel like he's a legend for that, but he decides not to tell Dejani any of that because he doesn't want to crush their hope because he needs to keep morale up if they're going to come out of that alive. Gary goes into the meeting. He looks at all the officers. Some of them are looking at him kind of crazy, like they don't accept him being in charge. And But most of them are like desperate for him to save the day. So he basically starts, you know, trying to tell them what's going on and some of the captains are like oh well you don't have the experience to be leading us because you're only seniority because you basically started before we did but you are basically out of date you haven't been fighting in the current situation you don't know what's going on so you're not capable of leading us and so Gary's like even if that's the case Admiral Block left me in charge that's his final order and so since that's the order I'm the one in charge and the options are they can they can go down fighting they can surrender or they can disband Gary automatically shoots down disbanding because he's like there's no man left behind and he's like we just gonna go down fighting basically you know some of the captains of course they're still like oh you're not equipped to lead us so Gary he basically goes off and he's like I'm the one in charge Admiral Block left me in charge if you don't like it I'll replace y'all with some people who be cooperative and so that gets them to shut up and so then finally they all agree to him being in charge and he basically promises that he'll do his best to get them out of the situation so I'm on chapter two and Gary just let them know he's gonna try his best right so they're all being skeptical and he notices that a lot of them are really young they have like a map of the alliance set up on the table it's digital he points to it and he's like why is this one space not guarded it's a system jump point and a system jump point is a faster than light travel mechanic but it's slower than the hypernets one of the captains is like oh it's unguarded because it's irrelevant he's like we can use that to get away we can use that to jump to another star system and then we can just use the system jump points to get back to the alliance and so they're all like oh no that's that's not gonna work that's stupid because they're not fast enough and i'm like y'all don't want to get home bad enough y'all don't want to escape this dire situation bad enough y'all have a solution that y'all are not guarding that is right there and then Dejani, she makes the point that the syndicate the only way they can follow them is through that same jump point so that'll give them time to jump through that jump point and then jump somewhere else and the syndicate will be hard to follow them It'll give them time, right? And they making excuses. Oh, no, we can't use this. I'm like, y'all don't want to get back home. Y'all don't want to get to the Alliance bad enough because y'all keep making excuses. Y'all have a whole opportunity sitting right there unguarded. And y'all don't want to use it because it's not fast enough. It's given the promised land saga. They sent them 12 spies and 10 of them came in back talking about we can't do it. And two of them like, yes, we can, even though God told them they could, but they didn't want to believe it. I'm like, y'all don't want to get home bad enough. Y'all don't want to get back to the Alliance bad enough. Y'all don't want to escape this dire situation bad enough. Because if it was me, I don't care if it is a system jump point. We using it. That could be our one opportunity to get out of here. And y'all don't want to use it because it's not fast enough. Because it's not a hypernet. And they keep making this point to say that Gary is outdated. Maybe him being outdated is a good thing. Because y'all are so used to what y'all have currently. That y'all not considering previous alternatives. Today is May 11th. I need to talk real quick about what just happened in this book. So I'm still in chapter two. Geary is, you know, still at the meeting, proposed the plan of using the system jump drive. There's some pushback at first, but everybody eventually agrees to do it. They leave, except for these two officers, which are from the Rift Federation and from the Callus Republic. They're represented by their co-president, Victoria Ryan. She stays to have a one-on-one -on -one with Geary. And basically she's like, I need to know if I can trust you. If I ask you the location of the hypernet key, because I know it's on one of the ships, I just don't know which one, would you tell me? Oh, are you really Black Jack Geary, right? She's asking all these questions and stuff like that. And I'm like, this is a trap. She must be working for the syndicate to try to get this information to give back to them. I am concerned that Geary is going to be another Jack John, and I don't want that to happen because I really like Geary. He basically like, yeah, I would tell you to gain your trust. And she's like, you do know that if you told me I could sell that information to the syndicate in exchange for getting out of the situation safely, right? In his mind, he's like, I didn't consider that. I'm like, you didn't consider that? Come on. Now. That's the first thing I thought of when I was reading it. And you're supposed to be the commander of the fleet. Come on now, man. Come on. Come on, Gary. Victoria's like, oh yeah, I'll go ahead and trust you. And Gary's like, okay, thank you. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to stall the syndicate as long as possible while we get our damaged ships prepared 
to get to the system force jump drive because what they're going to do is they're going to push the damaged ships through first and they're going to like go into a like a defense rotation basically making it seem like they're preparing for an attack and to defend themselves but really they're trying to get their damaged ships closest to the system jump drive so they can get them through first and so that is where I left off reading. Victoria is going to stall the syndicate, but she's going to do it from Dauntless because she wants to keep an eye on Geary. And I'm really just hopeful that Geary does not turn into another Jack John because I don't want a dumb protagonist. I hate protagonists who are supposed to be like the heads of something and they're really stupid. So I'm really hopeful Geary is not going to be stupid. I'm hopeful he's just experiencing some brain fog because he just woke up from a, a century long sleep, especially because this is the first book in the series. And I don't want to spend six books with a dumb protagonist so after Geary gets out the meeting with Victoria he goes back to his stateroom to assess like the situation and like gather as much data as he can and learn as much as he can and he realizes that there's a ship in the fleet with the name Repulse and it's commanded by a guy named Michael Geary and Michael Geary is his brother so he calls the ship and the Michael Geary commanding the ship is actually his nephew who is the grandson of his brother and this Michael Geary does not like Black Jack Geary because he's bitter against him because of course he's commander of a ship and everybody constantly compares him to, to Black Jack Geary so He's bitter and he hates Geary. And Geary is like, like, well, as long as you can do your job, we will have no issue. Geary goes to the bridge of the ship and they get a message from the syndicate CEO who's basically like, surrender now or face the consequences. Victoria was able to buy them like 10 minutes of extra time with negotiations. And so Geary gets on the line, taunts the CEO by basically like, pretending to negotiate and just basically like trying to give his shipmates confidence because they can all hear his conversation and this negotiation takes about an extra 30 minutes they need another extra 30 minutes to get in position to put the plan in place but basically the syndicate ceo he gets fed up with gary and they launch an attack gary's like okay everybody start moving towards the jump point and so they all start moving towards the jump point gary realizes that they have like a repair ship called the titan that is like super important and they need to protect that ship at all costs but it's heavily damaged and it's very big and it's very slow and so he realizes that unless he can sacrifice a ship to save that ship titan will be destroyed so michael decides to be the ship that sacrifices and he basically goes out in a blaze of glory but right before he goes out in a blaze of glory he contacts geary and he tells geary hey i'm gonna do this for you i realize now that the situation that you're in so i don't hate you no more i'm gonna eject my crew they're gonna be picked up by the syndicate most likely so i need you to one day save them and so geary promises to do that and so michael goes out in the blaze of glory while all the other ships are able to escape to the jump point and Gary vows to one day save Michael's crew and Michael died. Okay so chapter three I have two things I need to say. First of all it looks like they're setting up a romance between Gary and Dijani and number two I do not trust Victoria Ryan. The romance between Gary and Dijani it's very clear they're setting something up. He had a lot of focus with her in this chapter and they keep asking him about his home life and he's reflecting on how he didn't leave nobody behind when he took his last stand and disappeared for some time talking about how much he respects the Johnny and like yeah they setting up a romance between them two and as far as Victoria Ryan goes I don't trust her because she keep asking all these questions she keep asking what's next and she keeps making it clear that she does not like Geary either she is a spy for the syndicate or she's gonna be an antagonist to Geary in some way they are in jump space it's going to take them three weeks to get to the Corvus system. Geary ends up talking with Dijani. She gives him props and gives him encouragement. Her first name is Tanya. She's from this place called, I think it's called Kotsaka or something like that. They were traveling to go execute the plan against the syndicate. And they found him floating around in the Grendel system. And they only went there to get to the syndicate unnoticed. The syndicate basically laid a trap for them by pretending to give them the hypernet key through a traitor. He had a few years left with the survival pod he was in. It only lasted as long as it did because it was only him in there. Geary, he decides to familiarize himself with the ship and the people on the ship. He's experiencing imposter syndrome. And I also learned that Geary's first name is actually John. So we have another Jack John, but at least this Jack John is smart. He finishes familiarizing himself and then that's when he talks with Ryan. She wants to know the next step and he basically tells her that they have three options once they get to Corvus. Yuan, which is the fastest way to get back to the Alliance. They can go to Voss, which is in Syndicate territory and would be the most risky way to get back or they can go to 
Caliban. And so he decides he wants to go to Caliban because it's the least likely option and that'll give them the time to get themselves resituated. At first, she's like, my interest is going to Yuan because I wanted to get back home as fast as possible. But I see your point. But I don't trust her because I don't know, something about her just is not trustworthy. And so then after he has his talk, he goes back to talk to Dijani again to basically let her know we are going to Caliban next. And she's like, well, you need to tell the captains face to face if this is your decision because everybody wants to go to Yuan because it's the fastest way back home and everybody wants to get back home. She gives an explanation on like the hypernets. It's kind of like with airplanes, how like you can either do direct to from your destination with certain flights or like stops in between. So the hypernet system is like direct to and from system jump, which is what they're using is like stops that you have to take to get to where you're going. The system they're traveling to the Corvus system is not on the hypernet system. And so that's why she believes they'll have a little bit of time to like recoup and get themselves together. And that's why she's like after some convincing okay with going with his plan but she also reveals that getting the key back to the alliance will allow the alliance to also travel on the syndicate hypernets and so that's why it's important for them to get this hypernet key back to the alliance so that they can use it to their advantage and by doing this it will force the syndicate to either have to shut down the hypernet key or bolster their forces against possible attacks by the alliance and gary plans to get himself prepared to tell the other captains hey we going to caliban because he knows that's going to be a firestorm and yeah that's how chapter three went and like i said they are very clearly setting up this romance between dejani and giri i do not trust victoria ryan we'll see how this goes chapter four was a mess and these people had one job and that was to follow giri's orders and they couldn't do that so now Gary is like, I gotta get the discipline under control because what was this they came out the jump system and this means to get information right they didn't get information. The planet that they're getting close to has two syndicate ships on it. They're old syndicate ships. They could easily be taken out. Everybody wants a chance to taking out these ships instead of following Gary's orders. And that leaves Titan, the ship that they need the most, unguarded. So there's this other ship that is a light cruiser that has an unusual amount of speed. It starts heading towards Titan. And Gary realizes too late what's going on. The light cruiser is trying to take out Titan. And so because of that, Dauntless itself ends up having to deal with the light cruiser. And Dejani, she puts on a good show taking out this light cruiser but all of this happened because they can't follow orders and they can't get with the program gary's last stand has altered the way the alliance navy operates because now instead of operating on discipline they operate on aggressiveness being a great tactic and i'm like no and gary's like no that's not smart you need discipline with aggressiveness you can't just go charging at the enemy you get situations like what took place in this chapter where titan is left unguarded because everybody trying to focus on these two old ships that are posing no threat because the person in charge of them is not prepared for battle Gary has his work cut out for him. That's all I'm going to say because these people, they're young, they're dumb, and they don't know what they're doing. It's later on today on May 14th. They've thankfully defeated the syndicate. He's starting to scavenge the planet and the ships and stuff. He learns that the protocol is to kill all of the survivors. And so he's like, no, we're not doing that because we need to stand on honor and not commit war crimes. So he sends down some Marines down to the planet. And why one of the ships start firing at the planet? It's this ship Arrogant. Arrogant is firing where the Marines are. Everyone's confused. They're like, what's going on? I'm like, is it beef between Arrogant and the Marines? Let's find out. After Geary gets Arrogant to stop firing, finally gets in contact with Colonel Caraballi, who is in charge of the Marines. She tells him he doesn't know why Arrogant was firing. Geary don't know either. Geary tells her to spare the prisoners and leave them with enough supplies to call for help. After they leave, she is like, that is not what we normally do. And at this point, Geary goes off because he's like, y'all not following orders. Y'all are committing war crimes. Y'all have like completely fallen off from being who the Alliance is and what we were like in my time. He goes off and everybody's embarrassed. Dejani talks to him and she's like, you know, you're right. We have fallen off. We're going to do better. And so Gary encourages him to do better. So then he calls the meeting with the other captains of the other ships. And he tells them that they're going to Caliban next. It's these two captains, Fariza and Numos. They are always opposing him. 
So, of course, they do what they do. They oppose him. And then Captain Vibos, who was the captain of Arrogance, basically tells Geary that, oh, you're not the Blackjack Geary that we thought you were because you're not acting how we thought you would act. And Vibos makes this accusation that Numos would have them home by now. And Zoelis is like, no, he wouldn't because he tried to abandon us when we was doing the invasion. So, Geary basically stops them off from arguing. He puts his foot down. He tells them, we're going to Caliban, whether y'all like it or not, because I'm trying to get us home. Zoelis gives him some encouraging words and tells him he's glad that he's not like Black Jack Geary the legend and that he's actually human and stuff like that. And also Geary says that Vibos will not be staying in command. And Zuelos tells him, oh, don't choose somebody who's loyal to you because then it'll look like a loyalty purge and we've had those type of issues before. The Alliance fleet has fallen all the way off from who they used to be and Geary is like, we need to get this back in order. And Geary talks to Victoria Ryan and she basically tells Geary, I'm also glad that you're not like how I thought you were going to be. You've made me ashamed because you were right. We have become dishonorable. We started becoming like the syndicate and you reminded us how we used to be because the syndicate started this whole war because they're a dictatorship. And so they started the war with the alliance to crush the alternatives of being like a free world so that their citizens would not start getting ideas about revolting and stuff like that. And so Victoria thanks him for reminding them that they're not like the syndicate and that they should be better than that. It's kind of like you have my approval so far. Like you can always mess up again. The chapter ends with the syndicate coming out of the jump point. So far, I'm liking this book. I'm hopeful I'm like the whole series because I bought the whole series. This Jack John is a lot better than the other Jack John. And he's actually relatable. He actually makes smart decisions and lives up to his legend, even though he himself does not feel like the legend that he has been proclaimed to be. And he's actually like trying not to be because he doesn't want to be seen that way and he also starts to feel like he describes it as thawing out basically getting over the shock of being in survival mode for so long he feels like he's starting to get over that and he's wondering if he wants to get over that this jack john is relatable he's cool he's actually worthy of being the legend that he's proclaimed to be in the story unlike the other jack john so i just finished chapter six while geary was sleeping and while the syndicate were coming out of the jump point Victoria Ryan negotiated for 20 merchant ships, right? So Geary, he's not all that concerned about the pursuit force because he realizes that they're just trying to herd them into going to Yuan while they'll run into a trap again. And so he's not all that worried about them because they're not going to catch up in time before they jump again. Geary, the whole time the plan for the merchant ships is going through, he's like everything seems to be going to according to plan like something has to be off and sure enough colonel carabali she's like yeah gary uh something is off because they have like video feed of like the crews on these merchant ships and she's like do you notice how like these crews like they seem all young like they don't know what they're doing and gary's like yeah and so come to find out those are soldiers on the ships trying to pretend like they're civilians and merchants on a one-way mission to basically take out all of the Alliance ships by blowing up the merchant ships when they get close to the Alliance ships because the merchant ships are supposed to be giving supplies to the Alliance fleet. They use this knockout gas that the Marines have on them. So they knock out all the crews and evacuate them off the ships. They download new instructions onto the ships and basically reroute the ships back to the home planet where they will crash into the Syndicate facilities. Geary sends ahead a message of like, yeah, we negotiated with the syndicate people and they did not honor their words so we're sending the ships back the ships are going to crash to the facility just know that we evacuated the crews and we gave them every opportunity to do the right thing and we are giving y'all this warning so y'all can uh, get out the way and just know that we as the alliance are not as ruthless as the syndicate they are for sure setting up a romance between Geary and Dejani. There's this little piece amongst all of this where Dejani talks about how she hates personal relationships amongst the personnel because it's disruptive and gets in the way of their duty. And Geary's like, oh yeah, my old commanding officer, he hated that too, but he didn't have that issue out of me. Even though he could have because there was this one girl I was crushing on. He thinks in his mind about potentially sleeping with Dejani. And I'm like, yeah, y'all are definitely setting up a romance between them. But you know what? I like the way they're setting this up. It's not disruptive to the flow of the story. It's not seeming out of nowhere. And it's actually coming 
together in a way that's believable. Now, I will say this. I like chapters like this where we get downtime, explore the characters and what they got going on. Nine and a half hours later, the merchant ships finally crash into the Syndicate Fortress. And apparently the Syndicate Fortress is like these two strongholds that are orbiting the planet. So they're not actually on the planet. So the people on the planet are safe. So they get destroyed. And then Gary, he talks to Victoria Ryan. She regrets that the negotiations were a trap and that she didn't realize it sooner. And Gary and to Johnny Teller, it's not a big deal. He goes, takes some time to recuperate and get himself back together. These people in this book, they are praying to their ancestors and they've been doing this the whole book. It didn't click that ancestral worship is supposed to be their religion in this book. And I was like, oh Lord. He feels like he can't talk to nobody about what's going on, not only because he's commander, but also because he's out of place and out of time. Dejani comes and talks to him because at this point, they've reached a jump point. So they're jumping to Caliban because she wants to understand why he made the decision to like spare all these people. Apparently, number one, it was good for his soul. He was taught that uh, adhering to the rules is a show of strength and confidence. And then number three, news of them sparing the people and trying to protect the citizens will spread. And that might gain them allies. By doing that, it doesn't allow the Sydney kids to get what they wanted. Gary gets like a little bit of revenge on Vibos and Numos by taking Commander Hotherian, who is the weapons officer, who is a commander on Numos' ship, Orion. He takes him and puts him as the commander of Arrogant and has Vibos escorted off the ship by the Marines and escorted to Orion to be the weapons officer on Numos' ship. Numos and Vibos are going to work together on the ship and everybody's like, that's what they get. They deserve each other because nobody likes them. Except maybe Captain Fariza. And the Syndicate forces, they have not been pursuing the alliance like that. And Ryan says it's because they don't want to like show weakness. She suspects that they are not really trying to like get them to surrender like that because they can't enforce a surrender. Geary suspects that they are not pursuing them like that because they suspect that they're going to Yuan. And so the commander is trying to be the hero of Yuan by leading the Alliance into a trap. But they're going to Caliban. So we're going to see how that goes. I still don't know how I feel about Victoria Ryan. She's seeming more trustworthy, but I can't trust her for some reason. Like something about her makes me not want to trust her. They get into Caliban. There is nothing there. It's an old mining facility there that's been long shut down. The commanding officer of the Titan. Oh, hey, can we like mine the old mining facility for metals? And Gary's like, he gives like a preliminary approval, but he has to like do things properly. So he gets in contact with the auxiliary division commander, which is Captain Grundle. And Captain Grundle is not very cooperative. So Gary's like, you got to go to, he's not doing what he's supposed to do. A senior officer comfortable in his position and acting like he's busy when he's not. He decides to replace him as the auxiliary division commander and as the captain of his ship. He does this by promoting Grundle to his staff as chief engineering advisor. And so by doing this, another captain becomes the auxiliary commander and the second in command on Gundel's ship becomes the commander. He gets what he wants going with the mining of the metals and then he calls a meeting. And of course, Fariza and Numos, they're like, oh my gosh, we look like we ran. They're gonna look at us and think we ran. They're gonna think we scared and, and our pride is at stake. And Geary's like, we don't fight for pride. We fight for victory and honor. Everybody is like kind of agreeing with Numos with the pride being at stake. And so Geary decides to implement some training because he's like, y'all need training. Y'all do not know how to fight. But he doesn't say it like that. But that's what he's thinking. So he implements training, which gets everybody excited. And so after he announces this and everybody leaves, he talks to Captain Duelos. And Captain Duelos basically tells him, yes, you were right not to fight in the Corvus system. But at some point, we are going to have to fight because the war is only going to be won if we fight. Some of the people are starting to question whether you're still Black Jack Geary because you keep refusing to fight. You know, if your actions don't start matching up to the legend, people are going to start questioning your command, possibly not follow you anymore. And so Geary, he understands this, but he's tired of being compared to the legend. But he realizes that Duelus is right. Like he's going to have to eventually fight in order to end the war and get the people home and maintain command of the fleet. I'm really curious to see how it ends. I feel like it's probably either going to be a cliffhanger ending with them ending up in a battle that they didn't expect. Somebody's going to die or somebody's going to betray them. I might be wrong on all three, but We'll see what happens. It's about 2.30 in the morning on May 15th. So they're mining the facility. While the Marines are down there, they notice that like everything has been very well preserved. Colonel Karabali of the Marines, she's like, Captain Geary, something is odd here. This facility was shut down 42 years ago and 
it's almost as if they like wiped the computers clean and took out the operating systems, almost as if they were anticipating somebody coming behind them to steal it. And so they want to make sure nobody could do that. And so Gary's like, what are you talking about? And she's like, the only conclusion we can come up with is that there's a third party. And what they mean by third party is non-human being. And so Dejani's like, that's not possible. There's no such thing as non-human beings. But Gary says it might be possible because they don't know what's in syndicate space because syndicate space has been walled off to the Alliance since before the war. So they don't know what's on the other side of the wall that the syndicate put up. Gary introduces his training methods. Training is a mess. He's running simulations instead of doing it like live because he doesn't want to like waste fuel and stuff. So they're running the simulations. Some of the captains are cooperating. Some are being hot messes because they're senior captains and so they should have better positions in the formation. So Victoria Ryan ends up coming to talk to him. And she, of course, wants to know what the next step is. She wants to know what his intentions are. And she's basically questioning him on what he's going to do once he gets the fleet back home. Because she's like, and she's like, well, are you going to be able to resist taking power? Because when you get this fleet back home, you're going to have a lot of power and a lot of influence. Gary's like, yeah, Ryan doesn't believe him. And so she basically tells him, no matter how hard you try, you're always going to be Blackjack Gear. You're never going to be able to escape it no matter where you go. And I'm always going to hold you accountable. And there'll be others like me, even if I disappear. The asteroid that the mining facilities are on name is Ishiki's rock after the person who found the asteroid, Ishiki. But like what they're mining, the metals, it's going to weigh down the ships, obviously. And especially Titan. Titan has been an issue this whole book because it is very big, it's very slow, and it's badly damaged. And so Gary, he doesn't know what he wants to do after leading the fleet home. He really wishes he had just died. He plans to like, once he gets back home, to go live a quiet life in non-existence. And so after two weeks in Caliban training and gathering medals, the syndicate finally shows up. And there is a shuttle stuck on Ishiki's rock. And there's 30, about 31 people down there. And Gary, he has like this long like back and forth in his mind about what he's going to do is he going to stay and fight is he going to run he decides to stay and fight because he needs the fleet to believe in him and believe he's a good commander he's not always going to run from stuff I also wants to give them a chance to put their training to use ryan and it's like what are you doing he's like we have to do this it's no people left behind there's going to be this big battle and this can go one of two ways they're either going to win and keep pushing or they're going to lose restructure and get themselves back together considering i already know that this book is book one in a series i feel like they're going to win this battle because they need a win so i feel like they're going to win this battle but like maybe like book two or three they're going to lose because they can't win every time. This book, they've been winning every time. Eventually, they're going to have to lose or else the series going to lose its fire. It's going to lose its flavor. The Alliance, they won overwhelmingly. Like, it was no competition. Let's be real. They won. The formations went really well. The only person who messed up was Numos. Numos was left in charge of one of the formation pieces along with Dwellos, Cressida, Tulev, and it was one other person. And so in the battle, he complained and talking about some, my troops not seeing enough action. And Geary tells him, well, y'all would have saw some action if you hadn't messed up the formation numos was dumb enough to get on the fleet white communication and say this so now everybody publicly heard him being embarrassed for his mistake and messing up see when you do clownery the clown comes back to bite and I'm very thankful for Ryan right now because she was asking questions that I had. Because when I was reading this, it's a bunch of like technical terms that was used and I was confused. And she basically asked for explanation on everything. So I'm glad she asked for that explanation because I needed that explanation. Dejani was a little disappointed. Her confirmed kill kind of like got like taken by two other ships. So like she had to share her kill with two other ships. And even then she still didn't know. I possibly might give this a five. This last chapter going to determine how that goes. So I just finished Dauntless. I enjoyed it. It's about 4.30 in the morning. Geary, he lets the survivors of the syndicate, you know, they live. He holds his meeting with his commanders. Numos, of course, is pissed off because he's claiming Geary micromanaged the battle to the point that Numos and his team were unable to get any glory from it. And Fariza is over here being a pick me. Geary tells him the same thing he said during the battle. Some of the captains back him up. Geary realizes that the captains, you know, they're happy about the victory, but they seem like, like they're happy they won, but they're not excited about how it happened their reaction to all the loss of life is different from his because they're used to it whereas he's not and so after the meeting dwellers talks to him and tells him that everybody is not excited about how they won because they're not used to change and their pride is hurt they wanted you know geary to basically come in and reaffirm that what they were doing had been right he wasn't gonna do that because what they were doing was trash they didn't know what they was doing and that's why they kept losing he goes back to his stateroom to like you know just basically wind down 
and view some message reports. And he reads in the report that the mining facility was broken into after the syndicate left. And so he starts wondering if aliens are real. It's starting to seem like there's evidence pointing to aliens being real. Ryan comes to talk and he questions her on whether aliens are real. And she's like, we don't have any knowledge on them being real. They don't know why the syndicate started the war. Gary starts to wonder if the war was started because of aliens. My theory is this war started because the aliens probably took over the syndicate government and are opposing as humans. And they started a war with the Alliance. And so the whole time they're thinking they're fighting humans, but really they're fighting aliens. The book ends with discussion. She once again tells him that he is Black Jack Geary. He's still not trying to be under that label. They both are trying to remain realistic by not fully believing in him. And the book ends with him stating that he's going to get this fleet home. I finished the first book in the Lost Fleet series, which is Dauntless. And I gave it a 5 out of 5. It deserved that 5 out of 5. It surpassed my expectations. Granted, my expectations of it weren't very high. But I enjoyed it. I'm hopeful that the series remains as good as this first book was. I definitely predict there's going to be a romance between Yuri and Dejani. I feel like there's going to be some type of romance between them. And I still don't trust Ryan. Something is telling me she is a syndicate spy. I can't trust her. Hopefully she'll prove me wrong, but we'll see. But yeah, overall, I enjoyed this book. It was definitely a book worth reading.